Hi, I'm Basil Hoffman, and you're watching The Red Booth Show. Hi, welcome to The Red Booth Show. I'm Kimberly. On tonight's episode, I have a legendary actor, Basil Hoffman, and he tells us some great stories about working with some Academy Award winning directors and on some Academy Award winning movies that he's been in recently as well. So come and join us. Hi Basil, how are you doing? Well, I'm good Kimberly, how are you? Thank you for having me here. I am very honored to have you here. <laughs> it's I... my pleasure. <laughs> I know that you have been just in so many movies and so many TV shows over the years. And I think you started acting, I would say, in the 70s. Is that correct? 60s. In the 60s. OK, well. I've been in the Motion Picture Academy for soon it'll be 40 years. Wow, that's In amazing. the Academy. OK, so but you came to LA in the 70s, though, right? I came here in the 70s. OK, that's yeah. what I had. I okay. came here in 74. Amazing. So you started acting in New York then? I started acting in New York, did off-Broadway, a lot of stock. And I finally started to make money when I did commercials. And I did hundreds of commercials. I think that's how I got my first movie. Really? Uh, I did a picture for a great Italian director named Mario Monticelli. I did an audition for him. Uh, it was starring Sophia Loren, and I had a scene with her. She had already won oh an Academy God. Award. She won an Academy Award for a picture called Two Women. And I was just nuts. I was so... Uh, uh, excited. That would have been your first time, your first movie, and you're with Sophia Loren, Academy Award winning first actress. Feature, first feature and a scene with her. And I was nervous, and she gave me a great acting note, by the way. Did she? We were setting up for my close-up, and we had shot some stuff already. And she was sitting a little bit further away from me than you are now. And she looks at me, she smiles very nicely, and she says, do less. And it was a fabulous note because I, I'm sure my, my nervous energy had taken me way over the top. Two funny things happened, by the way, in the shooting of that film. Italian directors, Italians generally, are uh, effusive. Right. You know, a lot of, lot of energy, a lot like of... Yeah, it's, talking with your hands. Talking with their hands. I'm actually part Italian and I talk with my hands all the time. I'm sure you can tell on the show. Then you understand. Yes. Uh, we were setting up for a shot. And I see the assistant director, Carlo, and, uh, and Mario Monticelli talking. And they go on and on and on. And, and Monticelli is uh, very Italian with his... And finally, Carlo, the assistant director, comes up to me and I said, Carlo, what does, what does Mario need? He says, Mr. Monticelli wants you to stand closer to the desk. <laughs> I said, that's it? He said, that's it. Then later on, the same conversation goes on. I see them talking again with all of this. And I'm not shooting anything. I'm sitting by myself, minding my own business, but they're gesturing toward me and looking at me. And then we break for a meal. And Monticelli goes his way, Carlo goes his way. And I run after, I said, Carlo, what does, oh, Mario wouldn't speak to the actors in English on the set. And I only found out that he spoke beautiful English when we went to looping. But, so they had this conversation. I ran, ran after, I said, Carlo, what does Mario want? Is this something I need to know? And he looks at me like this. He says, Mr. Monicelli likes your face. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was that, was that experience. That's amazing. My, my first movie. And I've been very fortunate since then. Uh, I have mostly not had to audition wow. for films. And I had done six or seven, maybe eight big budget uh, studio pictures and I was in the Motion Picture Academy before I ever got a movie that I had auditioned for. Wow. And that was for Ron Howard, finally. But I've just been very fortunate. I did, I've done four pictures with Robert Redford. Which That's is right. Great. Now, you've done a lot of stuff with Robert Redford, and I think we should show some of the, uh, some, some scenes with, that you guys have done together. Well, let me get to, if we could, yes. the Electric Horseman. First, I did All the President's Men. I got a note from Redford. In the mail, Redford asked me on the set, he said, Basil, did you get my note? I thought I'd been fired. And I was a nervous wreck. And then I get home and I see a letter in the mail, handwritten note from Redford thanking me for my work in All the President's Men. Later on, Redford was doing a picture called The Electric Horseman. 
for a great director, soon to become an Academy Award winning director at that time, Sidney Pollack. Oh my God. I hadn't met Sidney, and I get the job. And, and I had no idea how I'd gotten it. You had an audition. I had an audition for it. I had an audition for it. So you think maybe Robert Redford said, mentioned you and was like, hey. well, Well, my agent said to me, he says, you know how you got this picture? I said, I guess you did your job. He said, no, Redford asked for you. I said, wow, and that's the Electric Horseman. Wow. Let's show a clip from the Electric Horseman. That would be great. That'd okay. be great. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, good. And here it is. Can I word with you, sir? Perhaps later, Mr. Steele. We're calling in our loan. It can't be serious. This, t this time it could, it could go all the way. Uh, the House is going to vote next week on a Senate resolution. Okay, well, when they pass it, we'll run with it, huh? Well, I don't guess you'd come up here to talk about that. There could be a lot of wealth in here. Okay, so that was the Electric Horseman. That's pretty amazing. There you are with Robert Redford. It was a great, another great opportunity for me and another opportunity to work with a, with a director who would soon win an Academy Award. That's right. Because Sidney later Sydney won, Pollack. He won an Academy Award for Out of Africa. And he also wrote a foreword for my book. Oh, that's right. Now, you've, you've written a book, and I would love to talk about that, but we have to take a quick break, so people will have to come back and find out more about Basil Hoffman. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking, and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with the amazing Basil Hoffman. How are you doing? Wow, I have to get over that. Woo! Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. The legendary Basil Hoffman. Oh my. How about that? It's good. It's good? Better yet. <laughs> well, I know we were just talking about how you had Sidney Pollack write the foreword for your book. Well, I did, but I didn't know that I did. Uh, when I wrote, I wrote a book called, I wrote a book years ago called Cold Reading and How to Be Good at It for auditions for actors. And then later, another publisher asked me if I could write a book on acting. Mm, who, by the way, the guy who asked me to write the book is Brad Lamack, who has been my publicist. My, he's currently my manager, has been my manager for a long time. He's my publisher. So he asked me if I could write another book, a book on acting. I said, sure. So the first book was called Cold Reading and How to Be Good at It. And then for Brad, I wrote the book called Acting and How to Be Good at It. And because I referenced a lot of directors, a lot of actors, a lot of people I'd worked with, I sent copies of the of the of the uh, the galley before before the book was published mm. to everybody I'd worked with in case I had said something about them that they might not have liked. Oh, that's very good of you. Everybody approved of it except for one, and then I got a call one and Christopher Walken, Steven Spielberg, uh, Ron Howard, everybody I'd were uh, Blake Edwards. Everybody said okay. I hadn't heard from Sidney Pollack. I get a call one day. Hello, Basil. Sidney Pollock on the line. I said, hi, Sidney. He said, Baz, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, Basil, he said, uh, I've read uh, this piece of your book that references me. He says, and you quote me. And he says, I know I said what you said I said, but it sounds so bloody arrogant. Can you, can you say it differently? Now, Sidney, such a gent, he could have said, Basil, don't use it. He said, can you say it differently? Can you soften it? So I said, I, I could say it this way. He said, fine, do it. He said, I really like what I've read. I'm going to read the whole book. So I gave, I rewrote that little piece. I get another call from Sidney's office about two weeks ago, two weeks later. And the lady says, uh, Basil, do you have, uh, you have a computer? I said, yeah. She said, uh, what's your email? She said, I want to send you something from Sidney. So I get a quote from Sidney, and I give it to the publisher. He says, I'm going to use this as the foreword for the book. I said, you mean you're going to put Sidney's name on the cover of my book? He said, yeah. I said, not so fast. 
So I called Sidney's office. I speak to his assistant. I said, you know, I have a problem. He sent me that piece from Sidney for my book. But now the publisher wants to use it on the cover. The, as forward by Sidney Pollack, is that, so I have to talk to Sidney. We have to approve that. She said, no, it'll be fine. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> it has, this has to be okayed by Sidney. Yeah. She said, it's okay. It'll be fine, which, which indicated to me that they were already disgusted. Oh, that's amazing. And Sidney probably okayed it. But what a gent. That's amazing. Classy guy. Wow. And you've worked with so many people, obviously, writing them about this in your book. People should probably go and check out your book and read some of these stories. Where can they find the book? You can find the book any, on Amazon. Probably the best place is on Amazon. That would be Acting and How to Be Good at It by Basil Hoffman. It talks a lot about acting. It's also about my career. And it's also a book for people who are not actors. or not. In, and, and people say to me, well, why would somebody who's not an actor want to read a book that explains acting. I said, well, why does somebody who isn't a makeup artist read Vogue? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. You know, it, it, it's because you want to understand makeup. And the stories behind the scenes yeah. and everything. Yeah, and there's a lot of that in the book. I, I think people would really, really, really enjoy the book, even if they're not, not in the bit. Even if they're not in the business, I think they'd enjoy it. Well, very cool. Well, we've, I hope they do. Go and check it out. And I think we should tell some more stories here on the show, too, about some of the shows you've done, like The Twilight Zone, which is an old personal favorite I, of mine. I had done a couple of pictures for a director named Peter Medak. Actually, I think at this time I had done one. Okay. And I get a call from my agent, and he says, uh, Basil got a call for a meeting for you at Universal with Peter Medak. I said, fabulous. He said, for, it's, it's a, it's, they're going to do a season a new season of The Twilight Zone. This was 1986. And I said, fabulous. Now, a meeting isn't an audition. That's a meeting. Right. Which means that you probably have the job, and you're just going to go in, and you're going to meet somebody you haven't yeah. met before, maybe the producer. So I go in to the meeting, and Peter is there, and he says, Basil, and the producer's there. He says, Basil, he says, you know I know your work. He said, but Harvey doesn't know your work. Would you mind reading? I said, I'd be happy to, Peter. I would just be happy to. And I go out, and I'm seething. I'm so angry. I hadn't looked at the script, hadn't seen the script. So I go outside, I look at the script. The casting director says, so you bad. You had no preparation. No, none, none. That's the worst situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so uh, the casting director comes. I said, Basil, are you ready? I said, yes, I'm ready. So I go in, and I read, and I come out, and I am so angry. And it's raining outside. I had to walk. See, when I walked from my car to the bungalow at Universal, it was raining. But I thought I had the job. But now I'm leaving, and it becomes a different atmosphere for me. It's still raining. Yeah. But now it's dark, and I'm angry. And, and gloomy. And, and, yeah. yeah. And, and then I drive home, and it's a long drive. Traffic is terrible. And I think I'm weeping on the way home. Aww. It, it, just, it, 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 it was a terrible scene. <laughs> I get on the phone with my agent. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mike, I said, it's the worst, the worst experience I have ever had in the business. They, sh they should never have made me read. They made me, I had to read. You said it was a, meet a, a meeting and not an audition. And I went on and on. And he says to me, well, Basil, he says, before you kill yourself, you should know, <laughs> you should know they called and made an offer. Oh, man, that must have changed your mood. <laughs> before you kill yourself, he said. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so that's my Twilight Zone. So, but, but that's a it, wonderful story. But, but it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece with, oh. with an actress named Mare Winningham. Well, we have to take a quick break. So I'm sorry we've gone a bit over time, but we'll be right back and okay. we'll keep talking about it. And we'll start with Mare Winningham again and Brad Davis. Okay, yeah. we'll see you then. Come right back. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Uh, yeah. oh, thank you, baby. 
As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with the wonderful Basil Hoffman. How's it going, Basil? It's going better and better every time you say wonderful. It's <laughs> just better and better. Buttering him up, you know. Yeah. Yes, well, we were just talking about the Twilight Zone, which is one of my personal favorites, and you were on the Twilight Zone, and uh, I think we should show some clips from that. That would be terrific. Okay, good, and here it is. Mrs. Lewis, my name is Stewart. I assume you found the button unit. The what? The button unit. The box we left on your doorstep. Yeah, we found it. May I come in? May I sit? This won't take much of your time. Inside this envelope is my card and the key that unlocks the dome of the button unit. Fits into this slot in the side, like so. In this way, you can push the button. So? So. When you push the button, two things will happen. First, someone whom you do not know will die. You're kidding. What a scene. Yep. And, yeah. and, and, and the end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I can tell you what happens at the end of it. Okay. Uh, at the end of it, uh, I come back with a $200,000. Oh, my God. And they ask, well, did, did somebody, and I say, die? <laughs> of course. Right. And then I say, but you don't have to worry. This will be reprogrammed and offered to somebody else. And they say to somebody else, and I say, yes, but it'll be someone you don't know. <laughs> and that's exactly... And that's the end of it. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's amazing. What a great series. And then, and then you were in the movie that was based on that Twilight Zone episode, yep. The Box. The Box. The Twilight Zone episode... Button Button, was based on a short story by Richard Matheson, who actually had written a lot of the early Twilight Zones, but that one had never been made into a Twilight Zone, so this was the first time. So we did that. So that Button would have Button. been one of the original Twilight Zone series, but they just didn't get they, to they make it. They never made it. They never wow, made it. But in 1986, amazing. we made that episode. That's so and cool. A, and a young, young kid named Richard Kelly saw this, and when Richard Kelly became a big-time director, he bought the rights to that and turned it into a movie called The Box. He wrote the script for The Box. And of course they had to have you in it. And he wanted one actor. He wanted one, because the first one was a short, it's like a 40 minute show, 30 minute show. Right. With Mayor Winningham, Brad Davis, and me. It was a three character piece. Right. And now this is a big movie. Right. Starring uh, Cameron Diaz. So uh, Richard Kelly wanted one person from the original television piece to be in his movie. So I did... I, I wonder did, who that was. I, I, I did a new character. And the character that I had played in the original Twilight Zone was played in the box by Frank Langella. Awesome. That's and that's so my cool. story. That's my story of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> that's amazing. What a serious, like history that has you know yep. and the twilight zone has inspired so many other shows and movies and you know it's just amazing that yeah. you're a part of that and steven spielberg did a movie of the twilight zone that's a twilight true. zone picture <laughs> and it's uh it, and you've it's, worked with him as well i've worked with him on close encounters of the third kind oh my god and I, I Close worked, encounters. i worked with, with steven spielberg because steven had seen all the president's men in new york so I had a meeting. This was a real meeting. Not a reading, but a meeting with Steven Spielberg. We have to take another break. So <laughs> we'll be right back with Basil Hoffman.
And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with Basil Hoffman. And he was just talking about, you know, Steven Spielberg, no big deal. And Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which is an amazing, amazing movie. Yeah, it's a fabulous, fabulous Still movie. Still to this day, it's amazing. I want, I want all of the children that have not seen it to go watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a great film. It holds up. It's, uh, it won an Academy Award for Vilmer Sigmund, who was a cinematographer. Wow. Uh, one of a lot of wonderful cinematographers I've worked with. In fact, I have worked with uh, two cinematographers who had the good fortune totally, to, in total, to have 17 Academy Award nominations. Oh my Owen God. Roisman was nominated five times, and Roger Deakins was nominated 12 times. The unfortunate thing is that of those 17 nominations, neither Owen Roisman nor Roger Deakins ever won. Aww. Not yet. <laughs> oh, Not yet. They're both living and still working. We'll have to make some more movies so, so, then. So, so maybe they will. And I worked yeah. with Roger Deakins recently in uh, uh, Hail Caesar for the Coen brothers. Yes. Hail Caesar. That's a very recent movie. Yeah. What, would you like to give us a story about, you know, being on that set and working on that project? Well, I will, I'll just tell you one thing very quick. First okay. of all, it, it's an honor to have worked with the Cohen. I, I feel honored to have worked with all the people I've worked with. I've worked with 10 Academy Award winning directors now and I just feel blessed. You are blessed. I thank God many times every day for my career. I, I'm just so blessed. But uh, what I did with uh, Hail Caesar is what I try to do with every film. I want to go early. I want a day early to the set because I wanted to see how the directors worked. And if I hadn't, you even showed up early for my shoot, which is really yes. Funny. I, I, just I, hanging around and I can't help myself. I'm just early. It's funny. So I get there a day early, and I'm watching. And if I hadn't gone there a day early, the next day when we started to shoot my stuff, I would have been distressed because I would have seen Joel Cohen not smiling. But being there a day early, I realized he doesn't smile ever. And just kidding. <laughs> no, pretty much. Okay. Uh, I never saw him smile until the rap party. <laughs> and then he then then he smiled and he was just 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 fun. And he has just, too just, much on his mind, right? Just a I nice guess. guy. Yeah. But but he's on the set. He's uh, more serious than Ethan, seemingly. At the rap party, but oh by the way, on the set I worked with uh, uh, Josh Brolin, who is quite a gent, sweet sweet guy. And I said to Josh, I've been looking forward to you, to working with you. I heard he's a really funny guy too. He's funny and yeah. nice. And and uh, I said, I was looking forward to working. I worked with your dad. Oh my he, God. he said, in what? I said, Marcus Welby. He said, oh my gosh. That was very sweet. At the rap party, he says to me, oh, by the way, I told my dad I worked with you. He said to say hello. <laughs> now, maybe, maybe that had occurred and maybe it hadn't. Oh, I'm but sure. Josh, Josh Brolin said that, and it was just sweet of him. Terrific actor, great career. And uh, I'm blessed that I work with people who are not only extremely talented and prominent in the industry, but nice people. I think that tends to go hand in hand, for the most part. It, ha it has, it seems, in my experience. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so, Hail Caesar, and tell us a bit about the character that you played on it. Well, I'm the guy with the money. I'll just say I'm the guy. Oh, and, and somebody said to me, Basil, uh, you know, there's just nothing, hardly anything left of you in the film. It's just that, you know, scene. And I said, well, you know, I'm thrilled to have worked with the Coen brothers. And in terms of the amount of me that's still in the film, I have no control over that. No control over that. You worked with many Academy Award winning directors. I know there was one Italian director that you had a cool story about. Yes. Uh, I shot a movie in Brazil. I got a call one day from my manager and he says, Basil, have you ever heard of an Italian director named Paolo Sorrentino? This is before he won the Academy Award. I said, no, no. And he said, my manager says, well, he knows you. He's shooting a picture in Rio de Janeiro and they want to make an offer. So I go to Brazil and I'm shooting an anthology picture. It's 10 different little pictures written and directed by 10 different international directors with 10 different international casts. Oh, that's cool. The one that I do is written by, written and directed by Paolo Sorrentino, starring me and starring uh, Emily Mortimer, a brilliant British actress. And uh, my first, first moment on the set, 
Powell's never heard me say any of the words. I say the first line, he says no. And then I had to figure out what, what came next. What does that mean? What is? Well, yeah. what it mean was, was that I had to go to plan two. <laughs> and directors have to, uh, actors have to have a plan two and plan three and plan four because you never know. Mm. But uh, I got very fortunate to work with this guy, fabulous, fabulous director. And then I get to work with a French director, Michel Hazanavicius, and do The Artist, which was the second picture I've done that won an Academy Award for Best Picture That's and amazing. Best Director. Amazing. I've just been so, so fortunate. That's right. Now, you've done a couple of movies that have won Academy Awards, including The Artist, and then there's also... Ordinary, Ordinary People Ordinary that people. Redford directed. And that was my third picture with Redford. What was it like being directed by Robert Redford? Well, Redford is such a class, class act and a fabulous director and a very underrated actor. One, one of my favorite scenes that Redford ever did as an actor is a scene in The Electric Horseman when he borrows a pair of glasses, sunglasses, so he can disguise himself and they're prescription sunglasses and he can't see. Oh no. And he stumbles and he does such a fabulous job, you would think, you, you would think that he had just done it that time, that way. And he had a, the character was great. Redford, Redford is a, Redford's responsible one way or another, uh, directly or indirectly, for every good thing that's happened to me in Hollywood. Between Redford and the great director, uh, 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 Alan J. Pakula, who has since passed away, oh. for whom I also did two pictures. But because of those two guys, I got a career in Hollywood. That's amazing. I mean, seriously, the, the, the stories that you can tell, I can just sit here and listen to them so many times. We could have you keep going on and on and on. But we have to end the show very soon. So we'll have to have you back another time. What please do, you do Kimberly. Yes, please. This has been an honor. It's been so much oh, fun. Oh, I'm, I'm so pleased to work with you. Me to, too. To be here and to, uh, you've honored me. <laughs> well, I'm, you have honored me. And I'm grateful. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Kimberly. And telling us some of your very cool stories. And I can't wait to see some of your new uh, movies that you'll be working on as well. Yes, I have a picture called The Last Word, starring Academy Award winner uh, Shirley MacLaine. Oh, wow. Which, which will be out uh, in the spring. Okay, so we'll have to stay tuned for that as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Basil Hoffman on... The Red Booth. <laughs>